Welcome to Cozy Couch Conversations. This is September and our monthly theme is exploring the September spike. And no, it's not a fancy volleyball move <laughs> or a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Or it's some another crazy kind guy of, called Spike. Or a crazy guy called Spike. <laughs> it's another kind of spike. It is. It's a spike like on a graph <laughs> where you're thinking it's going like this and then whoop. And it has to do with children and asthma. Mm -hmm. But if you're not a child with asthma, it can still affect you. So stay tuned to find out why. Yeah. So what we notice is um, a couple weeks into September, um, there is a spike in hospital admissions of children due to asthma exacerbations. And this occurs year by year. It doesn't go away. It still seems to be happening. Still seems to be happening and it is somewhat avoidable or we could maybe, you know, curve that spike or nip it a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. And so part of the problem is that kids are all getting back together again with each other in class and they're playing with each other mm -hmm. and they don't always wash their hands as much <laughs> as they're supposed to maybe they're picking their nose a little more than they're supposed to <laughs> anyway germs get shared germs yeah, get shared as they, do. as they do with any large group of people yeah uh and then kids with asthma who end up with a cold just a regular cold end up with an exact asthma exacerbation and it's bad enough that they end up going to the hospital yes so just a reminder we always want to keep asthma when you're diagnosed with asthma when you're young as a child or older controlled and that means um, reducing the amount of flare-ups you have certainly not getting admitted to hospital because of your asthma or having an emergency room visit so these two things mean that the asthma flare-up is quite severe. Yeah, quite severe if you're yeah. needing to go to the hospital. And so um, we have ways of avoiding going to the hospital with asthma. So if you have asthma, you should have an action plan. If you have any respiratory condition, you should have an action plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of the action plan, so the action plan has at least three zones, like a traffic light, sort of a green good zone, yellow caution zone, and a red light zone. Don't want to go there. So uh, to keep people in the green zone, we do need to have certain things in place. Uh, and that might be keeping your maintenance inhalers, uh, prescriptions topped up, have and them around. Make sure you're taping them. Take them, take them properly. Yeah, so that's part of what they found was maybe in the joys of summer, maybe some of these children have kind of fallen off of their asthma management plan when they're feeling good. And that's for everyone. That when you're feeling good, you may kind of be feeling like, eh, do I really need this puffer anymore? No. Uh, but the answer is yes. Yes, yes. I do. Yes. That's in your green zone of your action plan. <laughs> you definitely need to have it. Kind of had to think of your asthma like a fire in your body. And so Just that open. maintenance inhaler, the inhaler that is an anti-inflammatory, is like a constant fire extinguisher on that fire in the airways of your lungs. And so if you take that away, the fire comes back. It does. And we know yeah. every September, end of August, early September, every parent is running around <laughs> like crazy getting the kids ready for school again. Uh, and that can get missed. It can fall off the to-do list. Mm -hmm. Don't realize it. So if you do have an inhaler, set the time in your calendar a few months later where you're going to go and fill that prescription so that you don't miss it. Yeah. So we want, we want everyone to be really prepared he heading into the September spike season. Yeah. So that's one big mean, uh, prevention. Yeah. Prevention plan. Um, the other reason why, so other than viruses, um, being the culprit for causing these asthma exacerbations, um, the other culprit is environmental. So we're heading into the fall season and there's a little bit more exposure to indoor outdoor molds. So where, you know, the leaves are starting to fall, um, there's more decaying matter, there is more mold and fungus and things in the soil. Um, and so that could be a little bit of a, of a culprit for that in a bit more. Yeah, totally. So triggers are changing with the seasons mm -hmm. and people don't see coming. Yeah. Yeah. So keep your rescue inhalers handy. Yeah. Make sure they're topped up. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're handy right back to that action plan. 
um, and really trying to stay in that green zone. And if you don't have an action plan, if you've been diagnosed with asthma and you don't have an action plan, get one. <laughs> you really need one. It is really your guide. It is a written plan of what to do when you're feeling well and what to do when things are starting to change. And sometimes as part of that action plan, there are extra medications that are prescribed um, just in case. Um, and these extra medications really work to help keep you out of hospital. Yeah, so maybe it's an increase in the dosage, maybe it's a new medication. And so your action plan should tell you what to do when you start to have symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so noticing those symptoms is the first step towards that. So, you know, if you've got young kids, ask them how their breathing is, follow up on it. If you hear them coughing, take note of that. Maybe it's time to go to that uh, orange zone, yellow zone in your action plan uh, and start, start, being, start taking action. Take That's action. It. Follow the action plan. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, for those of you, um, you know, we're going to extend this out, this September spike scenario. We're going to extend it out a little bit. So, so we've kind of described what's happening in the children, back to school, exposures to triggers. Well, they come home, don't they? <laughs> and those what? of you parents who may have <laughs> asthma as well, or grandparents will get exposed to these viruses. Yeah, absolutely. So the kids get it maybe second, third week in September. It's the few weeks following that where the caregivers start to notice these same symptoms. And so maybe you don't have asthma, but if you do have a chronic lung condition, it can set that off too. So we don't want to get a pneumonia. We don't want to get a cold. We don't want to get anything that's going to give us an exacerbation whether that's uh, COPD is probably the most common one where we talk about exacerbations. You really need to have your action plan in place, <laughs> stay on top of it. And if you have kids that you're looking after, uh, consider them a threat. This <laughs> <laughs> kid is there. No, but um, take extra hands. caution. Yeah, yeah. We're we're going to start really thinking about um, the ways that we can kind of avoid infection. Yeah, so all your normal things, right? Washing your hands. Yeah. If you're in close proximity with people who are sick, wash your hands more. You could consider wearing a mask. You could consider that um, social distancing, you know, um, mm -hmm. take steps to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, boost your immune system. Yeah. Even if you're you know, this is a good uh, avoidance measure. So it, when it is September, boost your immune system. Maybe you're eating more oranges, getting more vitamin C in there. The water, 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 Keep water. Hydrated. Keep yes. hydrated. Yeah. Flush out any toxins or bacteria or viruses. Your body can help you uh, get rid of those naturally if it has enough water to flush them through. Yeah, yeah. get plenty of rest. Yes, rest is a sleep big is very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's a good time of year to think of yourself, protect yourself so that you can take care of these kids safely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then along with the kids having, with living with asthma, having their action plan, then those of you living with a chronic lung condition who may um, have grandkids and grandchildren um, that you're getting exposed to, make sure your action plan is up to date. And action plans, uh, we mentioned a couple, we mentioned asthma, we mentioned COPD, but an action plan is really just a written plan of what to do when you're breathing, again, is feeling well and what to do when it changes. So those of you living with other chronic lung conditions like pulmonary fibrosis, you can certainly talk to your doctor and have them write out, you know, what your next steps are. Yeah, talk to your, either your respirologist, physician, nurse practitioner, community mm -hmm. respiratory therapist can totally help you out with that. So if you don't have an action plan, look into getting one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we hope you, we've provided you with some tools um, to get you through the September spike. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming, but there are definitely some prevention tools that we can do, we can use. And um, we hope you use them and we hope you get out there and, and live, live your, your best, best long life. life. See you next time.